What's going on everybody? So I'm back today to talk about a new release film on Shudder that was also a recommendation that someone gave me on TikTok recently. And this was a film that had been on my list for a while because it was from the writers of the film Thelma from Joaquin Trier and they also wrote on The Worst Person in the World, which are two of my favorite films in recent memory. And I was really looking forward to this movie and the film I'm going to be talking about today is The Innocence. The Innocence is directed by Eskil Vogt. Four children become friends during the summer holidays, and out of sight of the adults, they discover they have hidden powers. While exploring their newfound abilities in the nearby forest and playgrounds, their innocent play takes a dark turn and strange things begin to happen. Lead characters are Ida and Anna. Anna has autism and their sisters, and you can tell from really early on, Ida does not like it that Anna gets as much attention as she does. She even goes as far as to like putting things in her shoes to make her feet bleed. Anna doesn't seem to feel pain on the outside because she can't communicate verbally even though we find out later that she can feel pain. Really early on it's like this girl Ida is not a very likable character. All these kids in this film with the exception of Anna who's dealing with autism and Aisha who is another young girl who seems to be very sweet. She seems to be one of the better characters that you're following later on which she'll be introduced later. You're just kind of in the perspective of these people live in this place, it's vacation time and they're getting time to kind to go out and the parents let Ida take Anna out into the playground area. Well, one day Ida meets this young boy, Ben, and they start playing together and everything's seemingly normal at first and Anna ends up meeting Aisha at the same time. And you can tell that this bond begins to form between Anna and Aisha where they're almost mentally linked and they can speak to each other telepathically. It's never really vocally said, but you see it through the visual cues. And it's really well done the way that they introduce that whole thing. Well, then you have Ida and Ben who are always playing together. And that leads into a scene which was one of the most disturbing scenes in the entire film, which if you're a person like me, I absolutely love animals. And this is a scene that there's some they do some horrible things to a cat. And it's really, really hard to watch. I would say if you can't watch that kind of stuff, this will definitely like send you over the edge. There's times where animal abuse in films, I've seen it enough to where like I know there's certain times where directors want to convey a specific type of evil. And I feel like the most evil, one of the most evil things a person can do is harm an innocent animal. And I think that's what they were going for with this, which I understand. It's just difficult to watch, very difficult to watch. And so that kind of sets off a series of events where Ben starts to kind of use these powers that he finds out that he has in a really negative way. And Ida is kind of our viewpoint to all of this occurring. And then you realize Anna has this mental link with Aisha. And when they're hanging out together, she gets Anna to the point where she can speak. And the parents are just completely and totally like shocked at the fact that she can even say words again because she hasn't been able to convey language in such a long time. And this film is a really fascinating coming of age story, which The Innocence is such a comical title for this because these kids are downright awful. I mean, they really are for the most part. Like I said, Anna, who is dealing with autism, she really doesn't have a way to act evil or be awful because she's just really to herself and she can't speak and she's just trying to live her life. And Aisha seems to be the empathetic and caring character compared to Ben, who just immediately starts using his powers to be a little asshole. And it just progressively gets worse and worse and worse until the third act of the film when things just really blow out of control and Ida seems to be that character who is sort of in the middle at first but she starts to taper in one direction and when she realizes that things are starting to get bad kind of backpedals and decides like maybe this isn't what I should be doing and it was really fascinating to see this idea of like youth conveyed in this way of like they get these powers and will they use their powers for good or will they do evil and how different characters are taking different directions based on what they, they are capable of and I I thought that was a really fascinating and unique look, similar to Thelma that also explores this idea of a person having powers but is much more aligned with like conservative upbringing and dealing with, you know, being an LGBTQ person in a conservative family. That has a much larger commentary than this film, which I feel like is much more just like youth and exploring, you know, the direction you take when you're a young child and how the decisions you make directly impact your life later on. And I thought that was a really cool idea 
idea for a film. I will say that compared to Thelma, the runtime of this is a little bloated. It's a little under two hours long, and I felt like it overstayed its welcome just a little bit too long. The cinematography in this is phenomenal. It's a very bleak and muted color palette. It just kind of makes you feel sickly, which I think the entire movie is really going for. There's a couple moments of, of levity throughout the film, a couple of heartwarming moments, but for the most part, this film looks at like trauma in like a very, very extreme way. And like I said, that scene with the cat was just like one of the most brutal things I've seen in a film in a very long time. This movie left me unsettled and uncomfortable, which I think is 100% what it set out to do. And I think it is one of the better films that was released on Shudder this year. I just don't think it's perfect. I think it has some things that could have tidied up. I think clearly, you know, looking at these writers that have these really great concepts, bringing in a director like Joaquin Trier, who is incredibly talented, was really really helpful in films like Thelma and The Worst Person in the World, where this movie, they took on the directorial helm. It's not as strong, and I feel like having that presence would have probably made it a more cohesive and concise film, but I still would recommend checking this out if you're looking for a really unique take on a coming-of-age film. So have you seen The Innocence? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was really good. I was really surprised how well I liked it. I'm looking forward to more from this writing team in the near future. As always, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.